Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So in my previous video titled Strategies for Becoming a Doctor, I briefly touched on the concept of learning to become a good student. Today I'm going to start a series on strategies to improve your studying skills. If this may be of interest to you, then stay tuned. So when I was in elementary school, I don't think I was a good student by definition. Now don't get me wrong, I did relatively well in school, but my study habits weren't exactly the best. I didn't really have a routine or system for studying. Now the good thing for me was I was very fortunate enough to have very supportive parents who were great teachers and took the time to teach me. I was also very lucky to have some amazing teachers who were engaging and kept me focused on my tasks. Then fast forward to high school. This was a time when the workload slowly started to increase and then all of a sudden I realized that I needed to do a lot more work to maintain my grades. So this is when I really started to develop a proper study routine that helped me become successful academically. These skills carried me through high school and eventually into medical school and residency. Most recently, in 2018, I sat the Canadian Anesthesiology Board exams. It was essentially the culmination of all the hard work I had put into my medical studies over the last 10 years. There was a lot at stake. Passing this exam meant I would be a fully certified and qualified anesthesiologist and recognized by the Royal College of Physicians and Surgeons of Canada. Now, suffice it to say, this exam was huge. I studied pretty much for an entire year to get ready for this exam. Now, all this is to say that I wouldn't have been able to get through such a large exam without, proper, without a proper study system which I want to share with you guys today. I think these skills can be used by many people, but you have to remember these are techniques that worked for me and you have to also realize that everyone studies differently and at the end of the day, you need to develop a system that really works for you. So I'm going to divide this series into four parts. Today, in part one, I'll talk about the things you need to do to get ready to study. This includes taking care of your body, taking care of your environment, and then some methods to keep your mind focused on the task at hand. In part two, we'll focus on the active recall method of study. In part three, we'll talk about the concept of spaced repetition. Finally, in part four, we'll talk about mnemonics to aid in our study. So without further delay, let's get into it. The first thing we have to think about even before picking up our textbooks is what state is our body and mind in? Now, before starting a study session, we should get some exercise. Things like running, biking, doing jumping jacks, or, or walking up and down the stairs are all a, all a good way to start. Now, I don't mean we should run a marathon before starting a study session, but about 10 to 15 minutes of physical activity will help get our blood flowing and get our minds ready to absorb new information. Next, we need to eat well. Our brain is an organ that uses glucose as fuel, and it uses this fuel to carry out its functions. Eating a well-balanced diet will provide us with a constant supply of fuel for our brains. For example, if we eat a very sugary meal, we may get a sudden burst of energy that dies down quickly. Now, a low GI balanced diet will give us a steady supply of fuel for our brains to function optimally during our study session. Finally, we should get at least 8 hours of sleep per night. Studies have clearly shown that if we don't get enough sleep, we'll be less efficient at retaining information we've learned. A tired mind will also take a lot longer to understand concepts. I'm sure we've all done this, but how many times have you gone through the motions of reading a page in a textbook and then finally realizing you can't even remember anything that you just read a moment ago? The next thing I want to talk about is our study environment. We should set up a study environment that is going to be conducive to our study. A good study space should have a large desk, comfortable chair, good lighting, it should be clutter free with minimal auditory and visual distractions. We have to remember to keep our workspace clean and clutter free so that we when we decide to study, we don't have to spend an hour cleaning up our mess. How many times have you been motivated to get productive and do some work only to see that your desk is in a huge mess and then you decide you just want to watch TV instead? 
Next, create a study space in a quiet part of the house where there isn't a constant flow of traffic. I would also suggest investing in a nice pair of noise cancelling headphones if you live in a loud household. When I studied for my royal college exams, I played either white noise or instrumental music in my headphones. I found that the music that had lyrics in them tended to distract me too much because I would subconsciously start singing along with the tunes. To back this up, there have been studies that show that the best sound to study to is actually silence. This is followed by instrumental music. Although studying in silence would have been great for me, listening to music just made studying a little bit more enjoyable, so I decided to study with music. Make sure your study space does not have any visual distractions. Obviously, setting up your desk in front of a window that faces a busy street probably isn't a good idea. Now, study with a bottle of water, soft drink, or cup of tea nearby. Having something to sip on while you study will keep you hydrated and minimize the need to get up out of your chair. Ensure your fridge is stocked up with healthy snacks for when you take your breaks. Finally, turn off your electronic distractions. There is nothing more intrusive to a good study session than a notification that pops up from Instagram or Facebook. So when I study, I usually turn off my phone and put it in another room. This just minimizes any temptation I have to browse around and waste time with my phone. Some people would argue that they don't want to miss an important phone call. Well really, if the world is about to end, I'm sure you'll find out eventually. So yeah, if you're serious about getting st down to studying, then turn off your phone. Now we have our body ready and our study space ready. Now it's time to actually get down to work. First, set yourself up with some realistic goals of what you want to accomplish during a single study session. I'll use the analogy of eating a burger. Now, if you take a burger and try to stuff the entire thing in your mouth, you probably won't do very well. Most of the burger will, will probably end up on the floor and you probably won't even enjoy it. And at the end, once you've actually got the burger into your stomach, you may even end up getting a stomach ache. Look at studying in a similar way. Take bite-sized amounts of study time, for example, do two hours per day for five days, and this will go much further than spending 10 hours cramming in a single day. The time spent between study sessions will also give your brain time to process the information you just learned, and new connections will form, allowing you to retain the information much longer. Now, this brings me to the next thing I want to talk about, which is the Pomodoro Technique which you may or may not have heard of. The Pomodoro Technique is a time management system that essentially encourages you to work within the time you have rather than against it. It was invented by an Italian guy named Francesco Cirillo, who used a timer in the shape of a tomato or pomodoro in Italian to keep track of his routine. Using this method, you break down your study period into 25 minute chunks separated by five minute breaks. These intervals are referred to as pomodoros. During the 25 minutes, you work really hard and stay focused. When your 5 minute break comes up, you're free to unfocus and do whatever you want. This could include talking to your friends or checking your phone. After about 4 pomodoros, you take a longer break of about, about 15 to 20 minutes. The idea behind this technique is that the timer instills a sense of urgency. Rather than feeling like you have endless time in the, in the day to get things done, and ultimately you start wasting a lot of hours with distractions, with this method, you know you only have 25 minutes to make progress on a task. Additionally, the forced breaks help to cure the burnout feeling that you may experience towards the end of a long day. So that brings us to the end of part one of this series. If you found this video useful, please sure to hit the like button. I would love to get your feedback in the comment section as well. If you want to see more videos like this, please make sure to subscribe. In part two, we'll explore the very useful study technique called the active recall method. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one.